The dictionary defines a toaster as a simple electrical device that will brown bread on both sides by exposing it to radiant yeah. heat. They've been around for a century. You can now buy one as cheaply as £7.35 on Amazon. But to get a decent one, you're probably looking at about 20 quid. This is the third time we've reviewed a toaster that is over 15 times more expensive than an average one. It's $350 for a to... Oh yeah, it is. This is the Revolution R180 toaster. Revolution embarked on a five-year endeavor to revolutionize toasting. Collaborating with world-renowned engineers, they crafted an innovative design by introducing a proprietary alloy and intelligent heating algorithm that dynamically adjusts to the food being toasted. This technology they've called Instaglow, and they've trademarked it. And they say it has undergone meticulous refinement through extensive testing by discerning taste experts. They say that the quality the quality of toasting is characterized by speed, searing the bread instead of dehydrating it, resulting in a perfect balance of a crispy exterior and soft, tender interior. That is some big talk <laughs> for a toaster. <laughs> it's just toast. It's bread. just toast. It's just toast. Should we make some? Yeah. We're making this a fair test. Like any normal toaster, we're not reading the instructions. We're just going to make some flipping toast. We shouldn't have to read the instructions, no. Barry. It's all touch screen. I've got some rubbish bread. Let's get started. Lovely. So it's just bread. How would you like it done? Uh, it, medium. Medium. So yeah. uh, let's go for number five. On a usual toaster, you're just going, pick the number. How long are you cook it for? Here, it's help you decide on the colour of the bread, but also what you're cooking it from. I cook most of my bread at home from frozen. Okay. Um, if I've got fresh bread, it goes into a sandwich. But otherwise, it, the bread goes into the freezer, so it lasts longer, but I can make toast whenever I want. You're so bougie. You have sandwich bread and you have toast bread. Well, no, it's just sandwich bread is, is unfrozen. But then the last one, who refreshes their toast? Ah, uh, no, see, I get that. You know, like you put them in the, yeah. in the toasty thing. It goes cold. Much better if you can reheat it. We've picked our settings and start. We've picked our settings and start. No, no, no. We've picked our settings <laughs> and start. Maybe they maybe, maybe didn't agree with the type of um, setting. We've picked our settings and start. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> and start. I am noticing a slight issue already. There's a good fifth of that bread that's not in the toaster. It's worth pointing out that Mike bought this toaster with our money. So all of the opinions are completely our own and our hatred for Mike is only growing. <laughs> One of the many benefits of this toaster is it says it's faster than any other traditional toaster. It heats up a lot quicker. How quick was that? I mean, that was very was quick. quick. I've got half bread, half toast. Putting it in that way has led us to that. So let's just do a rotation. So we've picked our settings and we press start. Right, so you might have to finger it in a little bit. Yeah. Barry? Yeah. Do you know why toasters are so slow and inconsistent? Please, Jamie, tell me. We didn't until our frustration with long waits and burnt toast inspired us to do some research. It turns out they've all been using heating tech called either the Calrod, which is invented in the early 1900s, or Nichrome Wire, which is invented in the late 1800s. Both painfully slow to reach full heat. If you've ever wondered why your oven takes 20 minutes to warm up and your toaster dries your toast to cardboard consistency, it's because you're using the countertop equivalent of a museum exhibit. Wow. Fighting talk. Yeah. So it's the Instaglow technology that allows the toaster to heat up instantaneously. Yeah, as soon as you finally worked out how to push go, <laughs> they did light up instantly. And the heat that comes off it is big. Also, it starts with all the elements glowing, and then near the end, the middle row cuts out. Because I guess there's more heat from the middle because there's two slots. Three, oh my two, one. Wingardium Liviosa. It's better. C compare it to the colour of what it's claiming. It is lighter than it claims. Okay. What about taste? Do you just want to butter it and taste it? Or do you want to eat it plain? Let's go plain. I would say, for what is plain white bread, yep. this has created a very crispy outside, mm. but left it very fluffy in the middle, mm -hmm. of what I would expect to come from a more expensive bread. Right. This is all well and good, but this is basic bread and we have no comparison. So, can we do a race 
of just basic white bread in a toaster, next to a standard toaster, and then taste the difference. Perfect. We've had this one for 10 years. So this, in their words, is a museum toaster. To make it a fair test, let's decide on the browning level. Yep. What time does it say, and then we'll match it on this. Three, two, two one, one, start. Mine's had a head start. <laughs> also, I'm Instant put, I'm, heat. <gasps> oh, mine's, my, yeah, mine's, mine's getting there, yours is no, instant heat. Mine's there. Right, their claims to intense heat are definitely, definitely true. This is a full heat and it's still not as hot as that. Mm. Once they get to the same level of brownness, we'll compare the times yep. and give it a taste test. Yeah. So, one minute 46. Oh. Stop, reveal. Shall I bring mine up? Same. Bring yours up, keep going. Not there yet. Bit more. What's that? So it's an extra one minute and 45. So it's double, double the du amount of time. Double the amount of time for the same brownness. Museum exhibit toast. Okay. Futuristic toast. Apparently I'm tasting quite a difference. Really crisp outside, but a thin crisp, because the inside is still fluffy. Whereas on um, old style toaster, it's, dry it's throughout. crispy throughout. Mm -hmm. So the Revolution Toaster did it in half the time and it made better toast. Mm -hmm. But it also has four or five other functions that we can test. Bring it. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video, subscribe if you aren't, click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. Next up, we're looking at frozen waffles. Now, to me, frozen waffles, are you gonna be cooking them in a toaster or are you gonna be cooking them in the microwave or an oven? Toaster. Toaster. I do yeah, at home quite same. a lot. Yeah. Supposedly, the smart algorithm in this toaster will automatically adjust to the moisture and the, don't look at me like that, and, the, and the cooked levels of that, which is why what we saw in the bread was it started to turn one side off because it knew it was done. Okay. Waffle, frozen. Go medium again. Let's just do this. We'll time. go for number four this yeah. time, okay? Now, the thing that I find interesting mm -hmm. is that they call this a smart toaster, but it doesn't connect to the internet. It's not smart in kind of like a internet of things way. So there's nothing to update. There's no app that's going to suddenly stop working when they stop supporting mm -hmm. it in 12 months time. At the same time, it means they can't update it. So when you buy it, that is, that, that, is, is it. That, that is interesting. That is as it? good as it's going to get. That's not what you're used to when something has a, has a smart screen. No. I think it's smarter than just a smart screen. And there's kind of that duality of, is it going to get better because they release better firmware yeah. or software, yeah. but also are they going to stop supporting it in a year's time and I'm not going to be able to use it? Gets rid of all of that. This is as smart as it's going to get. The screen though, is just another thing that could go wrong. A switch on a toaster is easier to fix than the screen. This is very Once true. the screen dies, the toaster's dead. So we've, we've transitioned from heating we're now into browning, also into smoking. Well, that is smoky, okay. That is smoky. Everything is saying I should eject that. There is a cancel button. Do you want to pull the ripcord? No, the middle the middle has stopped. It, it thinks it's done. It's, it's still going. Please stop. Five, four, stop. three, two, one. It's done. <laughs> Fair to say, that's a failure. But what it does highlight is how these are tiny, these are tiny. There's no way that that should be an inconsistent burn. <laughs> that should be burned throughout. <laughs> That's not been toasted smartly. It closed its eyes on that one. I think I'm even smarter than this toaster so far. Does it say toast in 30 seconds? The label says toast in 30 seconds. Before we change the settings yep. and blame this to the machine, yep. should we try a different waffle? Yeah. Bougie toaster, bougie waffles. Okay, right. Big that, waffles. That is a very different size waffle. We're going again? Go again. Start. So these say, put them in a toaster for approximately three minutes at medium heat. This is a much pow more powerful toaster. So it's not a medium heat. So I'd say that's that should take the same amount of time as a piece of bread. Yes. We're into crisping. Two, one, done. I'd say that that is a touch too far. Well, it's nearly. It's close, isn't it? But that's slightly further from the picture. Slightly further. What I don't understand is the consistency. Unlike the bread, which didn't quite fit in the toast, and you kind of, there was a line that wasn't as brown as the rest of the toast. Yeah. These waffles fitted completely into the toaster. Yeah. So why is it 
that the top side is still not as brown as the middle and bottom. I don't know. If I'm spending $350 on a toaster, I want perfect toast. Yeah. Chicken and waffles. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Despite being slightly browner than I like on the outside, it's still moist on the inside. Really soft in the middle. Mm. Next time, I'm picking number three instead of mm -hmm. number four. Otherwise, I'm happy with that. That's making a better waffle than I could do in my toaster at home. Yes, and quicker. And quicker. It's very easy to sit here, test this, and go, yes, that's better, that's better, that's better, and almost start convincing yourself it's worth the money. I'm not sure I'm there yet. No, well, don't worry. I've got another test lined up for you. Baz, wouldn't you love your bagel to be toasted on the inside, but still soft on the outside? Yes, and that is why I toast my bagels under the grill. Exactly. What if your toaster did that automatically for you? Supposedly, that's what this does. So you can put, and it tells you, face bagel inward. Bagels in like that. Find our bagel setting. Fresh. I want it, I'm gonna go for a number three. I want it lightly toasted. Okay. Start. Now, I think if we look in, the inside heating elements are gonna get a lot hotter than the outside heating elements. I'm looking in, but I don't see that. No, me neither. I reckon those outside ones might turn off. Earlier. Earlier. So they're gonna heat it up, but they're not gonna crisp it. Yep, they're off. So the outside heating elements have now switched off. Yep. It's only the he inside heating elements. See, it's smart. Yeah, my toaster's got this. What? Yeah. No, yeah. but it says that this is... Yeah but, yeah, but I think a lot of more modern, not modern, mine's about 10 years old. Most toasters, I think, have a bagel setting now. Oh, what's the point then? Like, well, no, but this, again, <sighs> this is definitely more intense. It is hotter. It should create a crisper, more delicious bagel. Not all of them have it, but a lot do. Right. And this is why I fall for marketing bump. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing we've not talked about is how it looks. I do like it, but I don't love it. Jamie, what setting did you push? I pushed number three, I wanted it lightly browned. <laughs> oh, WTF! Lovely grill marks on that. Yeah, Lovely actually, grill marks. For the first time, they're most consistently burnt. <laughs> 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 Why? Can you make a beautiful looking bagel with those ingredients and then we'll, we'll get some nice shots of it and then we'll eat it. But I'm disappointed at the moment. Well, you've covered up the burnt bits. Yep. You've put smoked salmon in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, now I'm doubly disappointed in the bagel setting. Do you want to try it? No. How are you going to test it then? I'm going to poke it. P poke my bagel. So what I would say is it's still very soft and squidgy on the outside. Yeah. It was warm when it came out of the toaster, but it wasn't toasted on the outside. What it did do was doubly toast the inside. It did. Have you finished poking my bagel? Yes. Thank you. A little overdone, but it's fine. But do I want a fine bagel? I want for that much money? No, I want excellent. So far, I'm really impressed by the heating elements. Yeah. I just wish it didn't have a smart screen at the front. They just had a dial. I could just go on, off. That's a very good, powerful toaster with an inconvenient, not smart screen. So far. So far. Because it's setting unrealistic expectations. Yes. I have something else that we can test. When will it stop? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so, it turns out Mike didn't spend $350 on the toaster. He got some sort of deal? He did get some sort of deal when he bought the $80 Panini Press accessory, we got a, a bundle discount of about 95p. <laughs> no! So this is the Panini Press accessory that, that you can buy with it. It's quite smart in that respect. It's gonna go into the toaster like that. The only thing I would say is it does feel weird to put something metal in a toaster. My mum put a knife in the toaster once and threw herself against the wall behind her because it electrocuted her. Exactly so do not do that unless it's specifically designed for that purpose. Why don't you put together a toasty? Yeah, okay, cool. I'm also gonna put together like a case of deer and see if it can do that as well. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. okay, sure. Yeah. A case of what? Well, cause I just wanna check if it leaks. <laughs> okay. This is bread to make a panini. Yes. That's not gonna fit. Oh, it's gonna fit that way. No, it won't. That will not fit. 
So straight up, we can't make a, what I would assume is a, a traditional panini. We're making a toasty, aren't we? We're making a toasty. We're making a toasty. We're making a toasty. Okay. I'm going for a generous portion. Oh, you really are. Because I think one of the benefits of this press is that it is actually a press. This has a magnetic clamp to hold it in place. Ooh. So I'm going to retest that. Right, we're, we're, it's working in terms of the clamping mechanism. We're pushing down, hold it in. That is a well clamped toasty. Let's give it a go. Going into there. Panini mode. Panini mode! Look at that. I reckon go hot yeah, four or five. Good grill marks. We've got sourdough as well. Insert panini press before start. Okay, you ready? Yep. Go. The, the mechanism not, not holding, but it's staying in. While that's toasting again, I do like the look of it. It has a premium look, but when you feel it, it's the um, the metal stainless steel look. That's actually just plastic underneath. Yeah, not as posh as my toaster at home, which is stainless steel, and nowhere near as expensive. It is very cool on the outside. It is very cool. Mm. Our toaster looks great, and our toaster looks pretty clean. Yeah, a bit of cheese at the top. It's done its job, it's held it in place. It's a good looking toaster. It's got some good grill lines. Could be browner. Could be browner. Right, your turn, sir. It's okay. quite hot, be okay. careful. for number six, because I've seen yours. Yeah. And I want mine a bit more. Now you're right, it does need more time, because it's not as brown the outside and the cheese hasn't completely melted. Next time we need to leave it on for a little bit longer. Five wasn't enough. No. That needs a six, maybe even a seven. Yeah. That felt quicker than yours. Yep. But I put that on an, an extra number. Yeah, okay. It's not that crispy, Barry. It's really, really hot but it's not that crispy. It needs more time. But that was six out of seven. It wow. can't go in for that much longer. Wow. I'm gonna put this back in. We had a few more things to test than this, but I think we're getting to the point now. It's making me angry. It's gone all the way in. Why is it going all the way in? Don't know. If I ever get to the position where I can afford $430 on a toaster and panini press, mm -hmm. then I want to know that I can press one button walk away and come back to the perfect yep. toast. I need to know that I've spent that money mm -hmm. to get the perfect toast, bagel, waffle, toasty, mm -hmm. every single time. This doesn't do that. The Mitsubishi, perfect toast every time. In fact, sensational toast. Technology that we'd never seen before. Yep. It steamed it as well as cooked it by not adding any water. It just used the moisture from the bread. Yep. But it was really pricey, over 300 pounds. The Bermuda, was more like a mini oven, but again, toasted things really well by adding a little bit of water, it steamed it and then toasted it. Yep. And again, over 300 pounds, but it did more than just toast bread. That toaster, without the smart screen, I would pay 20% more than a normal toaster. Mm. With the screen, I'd send it back. Because <gasps> what's the point? So this is, this is double what it says, and yeah. that looks much better. That looks better. With practice, you can use the heating elements to your advantage and make some delicious toasted items. Now might be a good time to point out that this is the R180 model yep. that has five different bread settings. They do have an R270 version, which is $400, but has 34 different bread settings. It's just more things it can get wrong. And you do still need to pay the $80 extra for the panini press as well. Just get rid of a touchscreen and give me a knob on the machine. <laughs> Personally, I feel we've gone through the rabbit hole when it comes to toasters and toaster technology. There's been a pinnacle. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to go any further. No. This has got the new style of heating elements. Brilliant. Put it in a museum exhibit toaster <laughs> yeah. and make my toast quicker, yeah. but more consistently. That is a brilliant toaster. <laughs> Ignore this thing here. So in conclusion, we like knobs. But over to you in the comments, let us know, what do you think of the Revolution toaster? Could you see yourself spending $350 on a toaster? Who's gonna say yes? Not one person. They're just our thoughts. Let us know what you think by commenting down below. And if you want more toaster reviews that are slightly more positive, check them out here. 
There will be an affiliate link in the description box. So <laughs> yeah. just, you know, we've got to make that money back somehow. <laughs> <laughs>